and welcome to Gianni Batici's team selection video brought to you by Fantasy Football Scout. There's two of us this week, but oh. there's only one primo, only one primo, and that is Gianni. Gianni, my friend, how are you doing? I don't know, mate. You're the one with the better rank. I'd call you premium. You say better. That's like, a, yeah, when there's two people, the one that's higher, fine. But, you know, 65k, it's nothing to, nothing to tweet about just yet, is it? Yeah, I'm guessing that is literally a handful of points. It's super tight, isn't it? You yeah. just need, a, you have a green arrow each week and you see a nice little boost because it's that tight around our sorts of ranks. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we'll get onto it in a very quick second, but I was looking at your team. I think you made some good decisions. Last time we spoke, game week 27, I saw when I was setting this up. You were okay. going to the back, right? You've had some nice... Either you've had some good weeks or you've had one very good week last week. No, it? it's been slow and steady. I've yeah. had greens, small greens progressively. So yeah, it's been it's been good. Because since the World Cup, my form's been poor. Yeah. I think I went into the... I think I came out of the World Cup or went into the World Cup maybe 175-ish or 150. I, I think I was sub 200. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of my ranks in the last sort of month or so have been around the 300k or 250 or low twos. But yeah, yeah this is more where I think I, I should be um, with still some nice double game weeks to come, the blank game weeks, some chips to use. I'm I'm fairly well set. And I think I've made some, yeah, some good choices in the last couple of weeks. I've made some risky choices though, Seb. Like, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about my, my decisions last week in a sec, I guess. But yeah, I've been playing a little bit more high risk, which I like. Okay, cool. Well, Let's bring that up on screen then. And I want to hear about high risk because that's always an interesting one in FPL where like, you know, not, not to go down the, the model, optimal route, whatever that conversation is, but just in terms of risk, when it's a game of effectively trying to select what you think is your highest probability chance, how do we factor risk into that? But to walk us through your team and then talk to me about your risk. Yeah, and then, look, you look at this team and you go, pretty template, there's nothing risky about that, but I'll explain the, the risky bit in a, in a sec. Uh, Kepper in goal with three, Trippier and Botman both blanked, as did Chilwell. Grealish with the 12, he was a four-point hit in. Uh, Rashford six, March seven, who I started. Uh, Matoma two, Kane nine, Haaland captain 24. And Kai Havertz, what the hell is he still doing in my team? <laughs> Two points. I sold Tony uh, last week to bring Haaland back in. Nice. I could have sold Havertz. And I sold Madison on a four-point hit, despite bringing him in on a four-point hit the week before. Uh, for Jack Grealish. Uh, Madison was obviously due to play Bournemouth. Uh, Grealish had a good fixture on paper away to Southampton. I benched Bruno with three points, Henry with five and a stupid with one. I thought Brighton mids over Bruno were an easy decision, but it felt like kind of FPL Twitter played Bruno ahead of someone like Solly March or Matoma I, I or McAllister. I played Bruno ahead of, uh, what's it, uh, Matoma, yeah. Why? I know you love penalties, but Brighton <laughs> attack... Brighton attack versus Man United attack. There's no contest at the moment. Brighton attack's better. And I know you love penalties, but knowing where Bruno was going to play, everyone knew he was going to play deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he still managed so, to create five chances. He would have had about three assists yeah, if Rashford could that, shoot. So, yeah, I think to be fair, the, some of those chances that, came in the second half, though, when he did move a little bit further yeah. forward. But. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. To be fair, game state, like if they'd gone one or two nil, two nil up early, he wouldn't have necessarily kept pushing. So that's an entirely fair comment. Um, oh, you know, decision outcome one, but th this this isn't about me, I think. So looking at your team, speaking of decisions, I think there's a lot of really nice decisions in this week. So yeah, it was one Madison... of those weeks where everything fell for me. I got a little bit lucky, if I'm honest. Oh, but you've got to set yourself up to get lucky, right? And you know, you've you've had your you've had your fair share of misfortune too, and Kai Havertz. You you did Madison in a while ago for four points. But then you did Madison to Grealish for a four point hit still, which I like because that's not allowing that baggage of the previous hit to yeah. change your decision making now. You were like, you know what, that's gone. That's fine. I've already spent those points. If it's still a good idea to spend more points, it's still a good idea. You did that. You benched Bruno. And look, I've told you why I played Bruno, but this has come up nicely for you. I presume it was probably March that would have been benched, not Matoma for you, right? I don't know. Okay, don't let's, know. let's say it was March. Let's say it was it, March. It was, it was March who I captained a couple of weeks ago, or captained a couple of times recently. So probably would have started March, but it was never even a question. Yeah. Bruno bench was so easy for me. Cool. So if anything, that would have been Kai Havertz versus Fernandez, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you've made a good true. transfer in Tony to Haaland. That's, you know, that's easy enough. Defence, I mean, Rico Henry, but I like how you've lined up. Chilwell does the thing he does at the moment, right? I think there's a lot to like in this team. Um, I'm proud of you, my friend. This is a this is a good little move. How do you feel Thanks, about it? Thanks, mate. I mean, that, that decision around Madison, I don't know if that's a decision I would have made a couple of years ago. And speaking yeah. to people like you, like... Help oh, my, don't do that. My don't thought that. process. Well, no, because, you know, you, you would be first to say, you've already said it, don't let the previous week's decision like, affect the next week's decision. It's it's a decision in its own right every single time with FPL. And look, 
FPL family Lee won't mind me saying this. He made the same move as I did. Madison in for a hit. And on Saturday morning before the deadline, he posted his team and I said, or I posted my team. Anyway, we had an exchange on Twitter. A good friend of mine. Um, and and I said, oh, I'm going Greenish for Madison. And he was like, oh, I love that move, but can't do that. I've just bought Madison in for a hit. I'm not selling him for a hit. And it's like, yeah. no, you can do that. If you think yeah. that's a better move this week and you make those four points up and moving forward, you're a transfer ahead of everyone and blah, blah, blah. Because I have no doubt this week he'll be going Madison to Greenish, right? As will most at own Madison. If you believe that's the move, don't let last week uh, uh, affect you there. I say the same all the all the time over things like we hear a lot. Oh, I can't captain Sonny March because last time I captain Sonny March, he stung me. It's like, he doesn't know you captained him. That doesn't matter. <laughs> um, um, and I hear it a lot with Kai Havertz. So many have been stung by Havertz from that 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 seven nil win over Norwich or whatever it was when we didn't have salary, we went Havertz over him two years ago, whatever it was. And still people say, no, because Havertz stung me. I can't go him again. Now, look, you're probably right. You shouldn't be going Kai Havertz. There's many reasons you shouldn't. But that isn't one of the reasons why you shouldn't. Well, okay, speaking of Kai Havertz then. So the one, uh, by the way, I agree with everything you've said, but we know that. So I'll, I'll allow you to have that and move on. Thank you very much for putting that eloquently and lovelily. Um, lovelily. Um, so we have we have Kai Havertz in your team. Uh, Ollie Watkins, maybe, probably the other option for that spot a few weeks ago maybe Isak you went Kai Havertz we know why you went Havertz how are you feeling about that now and are you thinking you need to move that spot on to someone else maybe even Watkins a bit after the fact biggest blunder of the season for me was going Havertz over Watkins what four or five game weeks ago when everyone else went Watkins um, <coughs> big big error I think week one I think Havertz maybe got eight and Watkins six and I, I was like oh yeah, yeah two points up here the good then... he missed a couple of good chances didn't he yeah, he did. And then I think in the double game week we saw his XGI was higher than everyone else's and perhaps been a bit unlucky. Excuse me. And maybe Watkins has been a little bit lucky. Um, but it was absolutely the right call to go Watkins. He's flying at the moment. Is that a move I'd still be looking to make? I do feel like I've missed the boat and I do feel like Watkins owners might get annoyed at me saying this. His luck will run out. It's not luck. He, he's, he's been good, but he's also got a little bit lucky at times. Do I want Havertz in my eleven? God, no. Like, at the moment, I've got him benched this week. For as long as he's still in my squad, I think he'll be benched. You know, it was telling. I wanted to know what Lampard was going to do with him. That's why I was reluctant. I, the only reason I didn't sell him was the Tony yellow card thing and the Tony betting ban thing, right? It was the only reason. Um, I wanted rid of Havertz, but then I just thought, you know, let's see what Frank does with him. Havertz was a 90-minute man under Potter. When you look at those front three positions... Havertz was the most nailed in the team. Make no doubt about it. For those that say Havertz has been a minute's risk, it absolutely hasn't been. Under Lampard, I think he will be. Um, played 61 minutes. Don't even know if he's going to start against Real Madrid. Yeah, I want him out of my team. Um, and he didn't play him much in his last spell at Chelsea. Um, but does that spot become an Isak or a Watkins? Or does that spot become a dead spot? Because I've used my bench spot now. Four million Greenwood. Knowing I'm going to be looking at getting players like Salah in the not-too-distant should I be occupying that space with an enabler? I think I probably should. I think I probably should. And I don't know when I'll make that move. For the time being, you can rot my bench. But I think when I do, it will probably be to be kind of third sub. Yeah, I mean, Havertz is... I've got your team for next week up here. We can cover that in a sec. But Havertz, what is he? Just under eight, seven and a half, something like that? Yeah. You probably, if you wanted to bank the three million, that, do, you know, that doesn't get you many of your midfielders to Salah. So you may need to be losing Kane as well. Potentially, yeah. Kane could go all the way down to an enabler and Havertz could be going to... Uh, I mean, he's a bit more out of favour now, isn't he? But if we're looking to target, assuming you're free-hitting 32, target the the teams that we don't need for that week or around there, maybe there's a Darwin for you at some point, although that's maybe more a 32 move. Gabriel Jesus, there's no Arsenal players in this team. Are we going to maybe get Jesus back? Mate, it's so funny you say Darwin and Jesus. Like the two players, and I mentioned Isak and Watkins as possible options. The two players I've looked at it and thought if I don't go down, it'll probably be slightly up. Mm. And it will be to go for a Liverpool forward or possibly Jesus. More Darwin, to, if I'm honest, is who I was looking at. But my concern with Liverpool is the the share of minutes between Darwin, yeah. Jota um, and Diaz won't be back starting anytime soon. But we'll know he'll start to feature and that will eat into some of their minutes. I think the only Liverpool player other than Salah that's that's going to be fairly safe to start most games is going to be Hakpo. And with that, he's a midfielder. So, and a midfielder that's not the most explosive in FPL. So, I don't know. Maybe Darwin becomes a thing. Liverpool only playing once a week. It's harder to scout them at the moment without the cup fixtures to, to see 
players performing really well to identify them as targets. And the next couple of weeks might help me. Ahead of that game, game week 34 double, I really want to be invested in Liverpool on a double up. Um, how I get there and who it is, I'm not quite sure yet. Salah's obviously the obvious candidate, but which one of these midfielders do you lose for Salah? Um, knowing Grealish also is a double. Um, I'm not losing a Brighton mid. I don't really want to lose the United mid either. Look, in a way, if Rashford was injured for double game week 34, it would give, give us less of a less of a headache. Yeah. Well, so speaking of which, this morning, the word was he's out for a few games. Yeah. And uh, he would be back for the season run-in. Of course, the season run-in, who knows what that means? Like, you know, you can... We'll, all, we'll probably look at the fixtures and go, oh, that means 34, because that's when I need him for my team. They've been deliberately vague with that because they may yeah. have an internal date. They don't have an external date very clearly. So hopefully Ten Hag might give us a bit more at some point, but I don't think we're getting it this week. He's definitely out for this weekend, we would say, wouldn't we? Yeah, definitely out. Um, and a few games is difficult. You can interpret a few as three yeah. or seven. Like, and it's I mean, I'll t- tell, tell you what I think it means. Double. It think, I think it means he will be back before the season is over, but meh. Yeah, because yeah, you know they they they're just looking at the schedule and going, well, it's a few games. There's no, you know, it's not like when there's Christmas or an international break they can go, oh, it'll be it'll be this sort of period. It, it's a few. The season running is their, you know, is their version of a target. And let's be honest, this is a player that they've had to wrap up at times. Like in in Cotton Wool, he's 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 not the most robust player. He's not a player that can be fast tracked back to fitness and. And, and they'll be patient with him because they'll worry about reoccurrence later down the line. They'll worry about being out for a longer time. And yeah, that season ending, you know, we could see United being in, in, in cup finals. So they'll want him ready for that. I don't think he'll be rushed back. Game six of that few games is the first game of double game week 34, which comes in 18 days time. I don't know. I I I I, I, I don't know if I'd be holding him in hope. At the moment, I have Grealish. I think if you don't have Grealish and you're, and perhaps don't have Madison, and that's not the easiest move. I think Rashford to Grealish this week, for those that are looking at making that move, makes complete sense. For me, there's not necessarily a midfielder I really want. It's Salah, but I can't go Havertz um, down to an enabler and Rashford up to Salah. Leaves me with 2.7 million to buy my enabler, and I need I need 4 million. I mean, it's that if, if, if Rashford was fit, it's sort of Fernandez Kane would probably be the sacrifice in between them yeah. alongside Havertz. With Rashford out, yeah, I guess you've got to prioritise that. Or you're playing Havertz again. Maybe Henry, that's all right. But speaking of your team then, why don't we run through yeah. this team uh, for those listening? Yeah, so I've gone Raya in goal over Kepa. I don't know if you've got that graphic on screen, Seb. I did. I, yeah, I, I, I set by mistake. I had on my bus team Kepa, but no, definitely I think it'll be Raya. Um, Trippier, Chilwell and Botman. Chelsea's turnaround in the Champions League is six days. So let's see how many minutes Chilwell and Havertz get against Real Madrid on Wednesday evening. We're recording this Wednesday afternoon. Grealish, Rashford, March, Matoma and Bruno, uh, Kane, Haaland. So at the moment, with no Rashford, the guy coming in would be Havertz, but I will be making a transfer this week and it will be one of my bench players likely um, uh, being transferred out. So I still expect to have Havertz benched. Yes, maybe he doesn't start against Real Madrid and comes on and does really well. I'm, I'm sceptical on that one. Um, so yeah, it will likely be my transfer in this week. Whether it's a Rashford replacement or not, will occupy that Rashford spot in my eleven. And at the moment, I've got captaincy on Haaland, obviously. I think that's very reasonable. So you've, you're you free-hitting 32, are we? I am free-hitting 32. I've, again, been really set on that. I know 34, some are looking at. Some will look at 37. I get it. It's obviously, I hate saying it, team dependent. Um, that's true. But uh, it is true. Um, and for my team, like obviously, it's well set for a free-hit 32. I'm heavily invested in the team's banking. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the argument is you're free hit 32 and you might end up having six of the players you'd have anyway. But if you're free hit 34, you'll have six of the players you would yeah. have had anyway. Like it's going to be much of a muchness for everyone. So I think it's what works best, as we said, for yeah. your team. So uh, for yourself and obviously for anyone, anyone in a similar position, you've got 1.1 in the bank. You've got one free transfer. Mm. If you did roll this week, you wouldn't carry that after your free hit. So you do need to use that transfer. You cannot roll. So even if you just did some sort of, like you said, a budget maneuver on the bench or something that doesn't see any change to your lineup but maybe put some funds in the bank and doesn't burn a transfer i think that's the smart move and yeah for anyone listening to emphasize if you free hit in 32 do not roll a transfer from 31 because that will get burned when you free hit 
Shame, shame that it does because mm. I would definitely be rolling this week. The technology uh, just isn't there, Johnny. We don't, we don't, we don't yeah. have. We can, we can put people on the moon. Chat GDP <laughs> can answer any questions you want. But what we can't do is roll transfers through a free hit. It's technically impossible. Yeah, it figures. Yeah, I mean, how long has this game been going? I don't know, fifteen years. Um, never been the case. So, yeah, my move this week. It's a Man City player, mate. Like I'm buying. I want Triple City. A bit like last week, I was like very, very heavily verily. sold on the uh, verily, very, <laughs> very heavily <Shakespearean>. sold. <laughs> and the idea of going, Man City are scoring five goals a game. Like, why have I only got Haaland? So it was like, I have to sell Madison on a hit, even though he's got Bournemouth, because I need more City cover. Okay. And it works with Greenish. Did I have um, no City? <laughs> I'm envious. Um, so, I like, same again this week. It's Leicester at home. Yeah. I need Triple C. Whether it's attack or defence, it doesn't really matter. I just need Triple C. Oh, and by the way, they have a double game week coming up, which is a nice double. Oh, and by the way, they'll have another double later in the season <laughs> and every game's a cup final and they're the best team in the league. Oh, they've got the best attack in the league. Oh, they've also got the best defence in the league. Why are we not tripled up? Oh, that whole Pep Roulette thing? It's a myth. Like, yeah, maybe it's not a full myth, but there's loads of players that are pretty much set for 90% of starts. Well, that's the same when you look at the players from Spurs or United or Arsenal. So, yeah. And, and they've just beaten Bayern 3-0, was it? So potentially, yeah. I'm not sure if Pep would necessarily rest his team in the second leg, but he has the option of giving Haaland 60 minutes of not playing KDB, yeah, anything like that. Or, you know, if Grealish is due a rest, it could come in that match. Although I think Grealish is more of a tactical thing, right? He's going to want to control that game even more maybe now being 3-0 up. And so I think someone like Grealish would actually play. Yeah, I'm with you there. Like, I think we could see some early subs if that if it's still 0-0 at 60 minutes or 1-0 up or whatever. Um, there's also the Sheffield United game. Like, that FA Cup semi, Pep respects every competition, but... He'll, he'll go full on that. Every like, game between... Yeah. Do you, no, I don't think so. I think, I think every game between now and the end of the season, that. he'll he'll see that as, if I do need to rest anyone, that's my fixture. You reckon? Oh, maybe, maybe like... I guess Sheffield when I say United. full, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like he starts Bernardo Silva and you yeah. go, well, technically he's not in the yeah. first, the first choice lineup. Starts. And I'm like, oh, well, obviously that's, yeah. So, I mean, goal, goalkeeper probably will change. Um, yeah, maybe that's where Foden plays as opposed to like a Mares or a Grealish, or I think Foden's on the right at the moment. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, what, what, what about the defence then? Because one of your options yeah. is so, bringing in a defender. So what yeah. are you thinking there? My two options are simple. It's Rashford out for a midfielder or it's Henry out for a defender. Um, Rashford out for a midfielder would be a very short term view because whatever midfielder I buy I'd be nervous going into double game week 34 going they're not going to start two games if I go and buy Bernardo Silva or Mares. it was Mares who I was looking at I just like the narrative of he's had a rest he plays against Leicester his old club and we know we know his data is phenomenal when he starts um, and I do think he'll start um, but it would be a short term gain but City's defence is so so good like and yeah they've only kept two clean sheets in the last four but i was looking on the scout members area um xgc in the last four 1.38 like they've been unlucky in a way to concede those two goals they've conceded only four shots on target in the last four um that's a defense i i i, I, I want covering and the defense isn't being rotated um, I don't think John Stones can play three times a week between now and the end of the season. So I think he will see some some benchings and certainly some early subs pre-60, as we saw last week. But I think Diaz is absolutely now for 90 every week. He can play 90 every week. And I think when we look at the last seven Premier League games, he's the one. Like, he's played yeah. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Um, and he's so good. He's their best defender. Um, but I can't afford Diaz if I sell Henry. Could sell Chilwell. Don't really want to. Um, even though I'm not sure Chilwell starts this week. So it's Ake or Kanji, and I prefer Ake. Um, again, I think we could see Akanji lose some minutes, and there's more. We could see Stones play centre back and Rico Lewis play right back. We could see Walker playing that Akanji role, um, that right of this kind of three. And sure, Rico Lewis can play left back. But he's more likely if he comes back into the team to play his more preferred side, which is on the right, and then drifting into the midfield, obviously, but in defence on the right. Therefore, Ake, there's not really any competition. Sergio Gomez had seen some minutes as a sub. Can I see Sergio Gomez start in a Premier League game between now and the end of the season? No, they're all massive games. So Ake offers a bit of goal threat, perhaps more than some of the other defenders, perhaps more than all the other defenders. And he's 5.1. So I think Henry to Ake is the sensible move. And look, he might miss one, one game between now and the end of the season. I take that on the chin. I'm going to get a ton of six pointers. Um, unfortunately, the ceiling is low. 
you don't get too many bonus from City defenders because the attackers occupy the bonus because you're competing with your teammates uh, and you won't get many goals or assists. But I'm okay with that. You probably get a little bit more upside than you will with Edison, which a lot of people will look at as a route to City defence. Well, Edison's competing with goalkeepers like Raya and Kepa, who will get more than two pointers every week. Um, whilst Ake is competing with Henry, who's just a two-pointer guy. Whilst Raya and Kepa might go and get four or five pointers, even when they concede. So for me, I'm not even close on Edison. I hate that chat. Like it's just, I'm so not a premium goalkeeper kind of guy. Uh, certainly not this season. And certainly not with a player like Edison. Go for defender all day long for me. Yeah, fair enough. I think so. On Monday, I was talking to Rich and Andy. I think I was on Stones myself. A DS if you could afford it. Otherwise, Stones. But I think since I'm probably more of your thinking, where Ake is maybe the player. If we're looking at this sort of, you know, three, two, three, one, whatever it is uh, at the back, you know, we mentioned right back and left back there. There almost isn't one. And I think it's about who can perform those roles. As you've identified, John Stones, Rico Lewis can do that right back into midfield, inverted fullback, wingback position. Uh, Diaz, possibly the only one, well, I say the only one, Laporte could do it, but he's going to hold down that centre because Ake is on the left, which is probably where Laporte would also want to fill in. And then Akanji Akanji on the right, which is maybe where Carl Walker would play now that he did come on for Stones in, uh, was it last weekend? And yep. had no idea what he was doing. So I think he might be consigned to those centre-back roles for now in this system. So yeah, speaking of that, I think it is Dia Sarake with the minutes. But of course you have to accept that you may miss 30, 60, 90 minutes here or there, but it's about choosing yep. the one that gets the most. Exactly that. And if money wasn't an issue, it would be Diaz. But it is, and it always will be in FPL. Uh, Even when it's not an issue this week, later down the line, it probably will be. So even if you flush, I don't think there's enough between Ake and Diaz to probably justify that 0.9. If Diaz was the type of centre-back that scored goals, then there would be. But unfortunately, despite having all the attributes, he's not. Yeah, fair enough. I thought thought you were going to say something else there. (laughs) He's not. He's not what, Johnny? He's not what? Don't leave me hanging. He's just no Gabriel, is he? he he's so good in the air and so good <laughs> oh, defending gosh, his is. own box. But he, he he doesn't often get his head on attacking set plays, as he as he definitely should, because he's so he's so commanding. He's so good. Uh, his timing is brilliant. I mean, he, City goes short a lot as well. I've not. I don't know if they're doing yeah. that as much recently. I've not managed to watch as much. But I've noted in the past that, like, normally from the other perspective, when I've owned KDB. And I've been like, why won't you? He takes a corner and then just lays it short to like a Bernardo or a Grealish or what so have annoying. you, or a Mares. And it's like, goodness, that was a chance for a, a little bit of an XA there. Um, so yeah, I mean, if they're not putting it into the box from those positions, then Diaz, maybe there's, you know, second phase, but Diaz isn't going to get the same chances that a Gabriel would, or Arsenal actually do focus on that quite a lot, actually, and are impressive at it. Yeah. You have your captaincy on Haaland, Vice Kane, any temptation to change any of that? No, I, I wish I could make a discussion point out of it. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be a good, you chat, guys, good chat. You guys know I would love to. Um, it's, it's an easy one. It's an easy one. I think Leicester are down, mate. I think Leicester are going down. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, Do you know what, the reason I sold Madison? I was quite fortunate because I watched the game on Tuesday night live at the King Power. If I hadn't have seen that game against Aston Villa, yeah, where Aston Villa dominated Leicester, I wouldn't have gone into that game where Leicester played Bournemouth and gone. Oh, I don't fancy Leicester here. Yeah. I watched the 90 minutes and I saw where Madison was playing and Rodgers had just been sacked and Rodgers had played the last few games with Madison in the 10 in a 4-2-3-1. And he, the new manager had moved it, caretaker had moved him to the right in a 4-3-3 where he has played a bit this season. But because Villa had the ball so much, Madison was having to track back so much. And yeah. other than set piece threat, he just had he just was in the worst positions because he was defending loads. And when he did get the ball, he was deep on the right hand side. So he can't do anything in terms of assist threat, which is what you rely on on Madison. When he plays 10, you've got a bit of goal threat as well because he can run into the box late, um, which we saw earlier in the season. We certainly saw last season. Um, but under, I don't know, let's see what, what Craig Shakespeare does and where he plays him. Surely he he goes back to a 4 2 3 1 and plays Madison in the 10. But yeah, I fancied Bournemouth. I really did. Um and, and and they went and, and again, dominated a poor Leicester team. Well, you say Craig Shakespeare, but do we not have Dean Smith Sorry. now at Leicester? <laughs> we do. Awesome. Uh, which is an we interesting one. Dean I mean, Smith. only till the end of the season. Uh, he's been decent at getting teams, well, a team, out of the championship in the past. I don't know how. I mean, you know, what took Norwich down, was it? I don't know how well he'll do for Leicester. Like you say, though, yeah. maybe it was just a change was required. New manager bounce, eight matches left. Maybe it is looking to the future for a potential championship 
uh, campaign. We have Southampton at the bottom, 23 points there. They look like they're gone. We know it can change, but they don't look like changing. Leicester and Forest, Everton all on 27. Uh, Leeds on 129, I wish, 29. Hmm. Uh, then Bournemouth, West Ham, Wolves, Palace probably back out of it now. So yeah, still plenty of tight in there. Interesting to see like Bournemouth and, I mean, maybe we're not targeting West Ham as much anymore, but you know, they're not, they're not, it's only a couple of points. But they're not as far down as others. I think Bournemouth are doing okay. And obviously yeah. you've got here, bring this back to our, our talk here, we've got Kane with a vice against Bournemouth. Spurs haven't been as potent. I think Haaland is a very easy option. So last question then for you. With this being that last week before our free hit 32, we've talked about your transfer plans, but say someone who just you know has their team is set, they've got no fires to fight, and they don't want to they don't want to just rearrange their budget. They want to take a take a differential stab one week before free hit 32. So let's let's say it's a player who I won't give you a percentage, no, don't worry about that, but someone who you anticipate being lowly owned who could have a high ceiling going into this week because it's just a one week thing, then they can free hit, transfer them out in 33. Oh, a differential shout would be Son. Like if money's not in the, he's got Bournemouth at home. Um, I don't like Spurs at the moment. Like I think they're playing pretty ugly, boring football as they were under Conte. Um, but they will just be too good for Bournemouth. And Bournemouth off the back of a win, like you know, you know it's, it's great for them. But I think this will be a game too far. Son scored a, a worldie last week, and we know he's the sort of player that does seem to go on these goal scoring streaks. And I just wonder if he's about to go on one. Um, so Son could be fun as a one week punt but yeah not something I could do in my team or be interested in but yeah it, it's there likewise Liverpool versus Leeds is a is a, <laughs> yeah, is, is, fair, is, 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 is a fixture you could target Leeds against Crystal Palace in that first 44 minutes before they conceded just before half time were unbelievable they were so good they were all over Palace I don't know what the XG was for that first half but they could have been 3-4 nil up they were very very good and I I Seb, I know you would have watched this game twice, yeah. <laughs> but typical it's it's that whole cliche. You can see before half time, heads drop, it's a very different second half. I'm right. I think Palace scored just before half time. If not, it was just after half time, or maybe probably. Yeah, both. it was like 40, 46, 47, something. And like then that. again at 51 or whatever. Yeah. And 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 that second it was it was like watching two different football matches, that second half, and they collapsed. And if Liverpool score early in that, it could be an absolute rout. We just scored, saw Liverpool not long ago score seven against United. It could be a big scoreline, and therefore, if you wanted to predict a Darwin or a Jota to start, it could be a fun differential. I think we we were decent enough for half an hour, forty minutes maybe, but we put up we put up zero point nine three. Give or take. Don't start it. Depends depends on your provider, but you know, call it close to one for the whole match. In the first half, zero point nine of that. So first half was I say it was ours, but then Palace had put up like one point four in the first half. Obviously, you know, there's a big chance at the end, but. Arguably the better better team for more than the match. And then in the wow. second half, I and mean, we did, what, 0.05, 0.1, whatever it adds up to. They put up nearly two. They had like three-odd XG for the whole match. Again, depends on your provider. I'm just looking at sofa score here. Um, but yeah, not not clever. Um, I'd like to, you know, Gracia has tried a few different things tactically. So I'd like to think he has an idea. We we did well against Arsenal in that first half. We, we did move around our system, sort of a slight strikeless type thing. Yeah. Um, something we'd not tried before. So I would anticipate him having a plan, but so far we've not seen those plans last the whole of a match. So Arteta fixed it at halftime. He then took us apart. He just removed our press from the game. Uh, Palace, well, you know, Roy Hodgson working a bit of magic there. And I would imagine Liverpool, you know, we saw them fix themselves against Arsenal at the break, right? Yeah. They were destroyed in the first half and then destroyed Arsenal in the second. So I would imagine Liverpool, even a Liverpool who, you know, aren't on song from previous seasons, have got enough to take us apart. Which is probably the one player you're scared of this week, right, Salah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think there will be there'll be very few because Haaland's such an obvious candidate this week. But there's always those 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 rogue options where you look at where people are playing just for mini league success, for example. And they're like, I'm going to do something different. Uh, I don't there have will be there, <laughs> there will not, be some that not, go not, to not Salah Captain. Um, uh, are you going to yeah. get Haaland this week? I know I'm going to I'm going to try, but the I have two free transfers. The Rashford to Grealish and Kane to Haaland move isn't on for me. I'd be like 0.2 short. So there needs to be something else. There might be a defender in there for a minus four, but then I'm minus four behind. So an interesting one for Do me. Do you own Bruno? Uh, yes, and that is. You own Salah, obviously. Yeah. So. But I have Rashford as well. So, I mean, you know, we've all got good benches, so I could play something there, but... I won't go. I won't go into this too much because we spoke about it on Monday, and this is this is this is your show. But I will check out Scoutcast to hear more <laughs> that, about your plans. That wasn't a plug, but now it is. Thank you very much. 
Um, the one thing I don't want to do is go and remove like Shaw and Fernandez or and Rashford, something like that, yeah. and end up then wanting to get three Man United back in again in 34. It would feel like I'm, um, you know, not the same as your Madison in and out. Yeah, For different. me, it would feel like other people are already going to have two Man United. If all I'm doing is doing transfers to get back to that same position they're in, they're going to get two transfers ahead of me. You're playing catch up. Yeah. So I want to maybe, I mean, I'm not in the perfect position, but I want to maybe avoid taking steps backwards if I can. Yeah. I hear that. Well, I look forward to seeing your, t- your teammate. No doubt you'll be uh, posting it on Twitter before the deadline. Uh, well, maybe, maybe if I've made my mind up by then. We've done the community team. Normally just my managed to get that one in. But yeah. we will, I think we will wrap it there because we don't want to, we don't want to veer into talking about my team. Anything else to add on your team, your plans here? We'll talk about Free Hit 32 next week. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, nothing more for me, mate. It's been great chatting. Good to have you back. I feel terrible, so I'm going back to bed. Oh, well, you look beautiful, (laughs) my friend. So I can't imagine how good you'll look when you're healthy again. Look after yourself. We'll stop. (laughs) Uh, Thank you, mate. I'll see you later. Cool. In a bit. Take care, all. Bye-bye.